日本語を話しますか日本語を話しません It's the only operation like this, I believe, in the entire United States, maybe in the entire world. And uh, so we have a debt of gratitude for uh, all the people who have carried on the torch. So without further ado, Eileen and the NHLA, thank you. Thank you, Varen. Okay, I hope you can hear me. Um, the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, Varen gave a great history of the organization's background. We are the premier pro-liberty nonpartisan group here in New Hampshire. Um, doing grassroots politics at its best. Um, I'm up here with our secretary, Jason, and our former research director, Jeremy. And there are several board members in the audience. We review all of the bills in a perfect world, all of the bills that come into the New Hampshire State House. And that may not sound like a lot, but there's close to a thousand every year. And so our goal is to review and rate every one of those pieces of legislation on are they, is it constitutional? Does it grow government? Does it take away your personal freedoms? And rate them as either anti-liberty or pro-liberty. From that, and so we're always looking to train more volunteers on how to do bill review. Um, it started off with a handful of people and we have about 50 bill reviewers right now currently that work in our bill review process. So what the bill review does and why it's so important is it alerts us, the, the board members, of key pieces of legislation that we need, to, we need to go into committee and try to get a bill passed, or we need to go into committee and try to kill a piece of legislation where it's most vulnerable to influence that table of 18 people before it goes over to the full house to 400 to vote on. Um, so by alerting us, we can also alert the citizens and the people who are on our email list, on our activist alert list, Facebook page, to alert them to call the committee members to show up in the State House to consider giving testimony also on behalf or against a piece of legislation. So we're, we're really truly in the trenches working with the legislators and within the legislation, within working on legislation to get it passed or get it, get it killed. So. Anything else you want to add, Jason? I just made a little list of some of the things that we do. The, uh, the other thing that uh, is going to be coming up here pretty soon as well is um, basically getting more people out to be candidates. Um, we've, done candidate, we've done candidate training uh, just recently. And uh, in the last election, we endorsed uh, it's about 130 candidates. Uh, uh, Pre-primary, we endorsed yeah. 159, and um, we were able to get of those endorsed candidates who were either incumbents, they were endorsed based on their previous voting record, mm -hmm. or based on their candidate survey, um, 119, not including the Speaker of the House, so 120 individuals elected, pro-liberty individuals elected to the State House. Yeah. So with, uh, with that in 2010, we've had... Uh, we've We've had a uh, pretty good uh, results this year, uh, last year. Yeah, I believe it was about 80% uh, of what was on the gold standard. 80% yes. um, of the gold standard, uh, the publication that we put out uh, every week, um, was followed by the actual representatives. Um, I don't think we've had that any time in the, in the past. No, no, we um, haven't. Let me, let me give a quick background on what the gold standard is. I, uh, there's copies of our gold standard in the back um, of the room. So, it's a little bit counterintuitive. What, what this is, is once a bill leaves committee, it, it either goes into, it's either, it's either dead or it it's, could become law. It goes, passes the House and would go to the Senate and then would go to the governor ultimately for a signature. So we're there on days when the whole House, all 400 representatives, 398 representatives are there to vote. And we try to, on the most pro-liberty bills, again, this is why bill review is so crucial, or anti-liberty bills, we give them a, like a cheat sheet. We've got even a little crib sheet up here in the corner to make it easy for them for when they vote. And we give very principled arguments on why to support a piece of legislation or why to kill a piece of legislation. Again, is it constitutional or is it unconstitutional? 
And when you look at the gold standard, if you pick up a copy in the back of the room, it might seem a little counterintuitive, but they vote on the committee's motion, not on the exact piece of bill. So if the committee votes, thumbs up, we want this bill to pass, then we would be, and it's a pro-liberty bill, we would be in support of passing that bill. Sometimes a committee wants to support a bill to pass, and it's an anti-liberty bill. So we would, we would say, no, we don't want you to vote on that bill, and here's why, because it's anti-liberty, although the committee may want it to be passed. So it, sometimes it's a little counterintuitive when you look at it, because we're talking about not the bill, but the committee's recommendation on the bill and how we want the House representatives to vote. So. Um, and as Jason mentioned, about 80% of our recommendations in 2010 were, um, were opted by the House of Representatives. That's how they voted. We wanted them to kill a piece of legislation. They killed it. Is it safe to assume that uh, you won't be corresponding with Homeland Security again? That's Dave Minson from the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, meeting with New Hampshire's governor, fighting real ID. He's just one of many hundreds who've joined the feisty alliance and are making their mark on state government. Don't let these folks have all the fun. Do what I did. Join the alliance and help us keep the state house in check. NHLiberty.org